manga. I, I had our uh, games artist draw Kanye in a manga style. Um, so things like that. If, if you just stay in tune, and every time an internet meme pops up or something cool happens, just think about how to apply it to what you're doing. If you're an artist and there's a new story that just captures your heart, then draw your own like cool take on it and put it out there. It'll get a lot more attention than uh, creating something timeless. However, if well, you should do that for, for small boosts in the short term. If you're thinking long term, you, you should always focus on where the trends are going. Um, if you're playing a first-person shooter and a zombie is zipping across the screen, you don't aim to where the zombie's at. You try to guess where it's going to be like a second from now and shoot there. It's the same for uh, building projects and become famous in the future. When, when I started uh, my first successful site, theotaku.com, Anime just started taking off. It wasn't as popular as it was as it is now. It's much harder now to create a super popular anime site because it's already kind of at at, um, at a certain maturity level. The next the next thing to talk about is to promote it almost every opportunity. Um, I'm guilty of this too, but a lot of people are afraid to talk about what they're working on because they either don't want people to steal their ideas or um, they're afraid of getting feedback because sometimes getting negative feedback can, you know, can make you feel bad. You and have a project with both of your about Right. Um, but the two, two arguments on that. One, if, if you're working on a project that's so easy to steal, then it'll be easy to steal after you're done with it, just as easy as it is before. So you should always work on things where you have a unique skill set that uh, there are very high barriers for people to copy you. Um, and two, I've heard of so many more projects failing because they didn't get adequate feedback and no one told them it was a bad idea than projects where someone stole the idea and that's how they, they didn't become successful. The next tip is to keep your head up high, no matter what happens. There are two types of projects that you should work on to become internet famous. One are small projects, where you can bang them out every single week if you're an artist, or if you're a web creator, or a flash game designer. Just constantly create small micro-projects to experiment with and keep your skill set going. But more importantly, you should also mix that in with big projects where you put all of your time and all of your energy and all of your money and, you know, it could be six months of hard work. And sometimes, or most of the times, those projects fail. And you have to keep your head up high because the two things that are most important in your career are one, your skill set, and two, is who you know. And working on big projects, even if they fail, you've expanded your skill set and you've expanded who you know. So, I'd much rather be the guy who's, over a 10-year period, has had 10 really big, ambitious projects that failed, and the guy who had, didn't really have anything during those 10 years. It's just, you're just setting yourself up much better for success down the road than just playing it safe. And the last tip, which is relevant here, and that's Lady Gaga, by the way, is to uh, work with super friends. The super friend? No, super friends in general. Like, like, I was like, like you want to introduce me to the super friends, man? Meanwhile, yeah. um, that would have been so awesome right now. And pro probably the. Wait till Comic Con, I'll do something. <laughs> um, probably, probably the best advice I ever got when I was in college was from a famous film producer who came to speak. And he said that living in New York, and hopefully most of you are in or near New York or in the city. There are so many people doing like amazing, cool, interesting things, so many successful people, who if you just ask them to go to lunch with you, half the time they'll say yes. And then you either learn something cool from the lunch or you make a new friend or you have an opportunity to collaborate or sometimes that person will introduce you to someone else. So a lot of a lot of the biggest successes I've had has been from those random lunch encounters. I once got an email from this, a random person saying, Adam, I like your site. I'm looking for an anime artist to draw a logo for this little blog I'm starting. 
Now, the blog wasn't popular at all, but I noticed on it that she was in New York. So I'm like, hey, you seem like a cool person. Let's go to lunch. We went to lunch. She ended up being the former head of marketing for, for CNET, one of the biggest electronics companies. She loved my site, introduced me to an executive at Google, and that guy has been a mentor of mine for many years now, all because I just randomly decided to take this one person out to lunch. And that story has happened many, many, many times during the last five, five years. Um, and also how I met Michael. So, uh, heavily vouch, heavily vouch for it. Try to collaborate and meet as many people over lunch as you can. So now um, I'm going to turn the tables to Gia, who's who doesn't need who doesn't need PowerPoint. She can just freestyle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So doubtless my session will be the shortest and silliest. I'm kind of a cleanup crew since I wasn't. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to be involved in the creation of the PowerPoint. I'm really bad at that anyway. Um, but uh, I, you know, obviously most of the points have been touched on here. But I would say the biggest one for me is to just keep at it. I got my start with this actually with a full-time job. I was hired uh, by Navarre, the parent company Funimation, to work full-time on a site called Anime Online. Dot. I don't even remember what's common that now. <laughs> um, but uh, we launched at New York Comic Con in February 2007, and we're shut down by July 2007, right after Anime Expo. Uh, but I kept blogging. I had already set up my own blog at GFF.net a million years before that. And uh, I continued to do news blogging there. I continued to kind of stay, I, I hate to use the term relevant, but I guess that's kind of it. I kept my contacts up. I kept going to as many conventions as I could afford to on my credit card. Um, and so I continued to know the people who were in the industry. I, I knew my friends who were no longer in the industry. And well, of course, I'm still friends with them. I know that. I know who to go to, who not to go to, things like that. So um, when I got hired for AnimeVice.com, where I work now, I already knew everybody, <laughs> which uh, is a big help because I, the people who hired me don't know. <laughs> They're all also uh, former CNET employees, my, my employers, random connection. Um, so I, again, I would tie in and say, just keep working, keep doing something. Whatever it is, whatever you think you're doing, if you are not putting out something that people want to read, see, watch, do, whatever, nobody's going to care. And why would they? And I mean, there are lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people on YouTube who, you know, do a little video post where they talk about why they like that of the bleach, whatever these shows are. And those are great videos. But so many people are doing them, you have to really be doing something different and you have to be really consistent with it. You have to keep churning out that content. So it's like a big, like, Jenga block. But you don't want to pull them out because that's bad. That was not very good metaphor. I'm totally making this here. It also helps to have a trouble in your head. I'm told. I'll let you know. <laughs> what? Sure. Uh, how did you get your start? How did you get your start at anime online? How did they discover you? Uh, well, actually, that's kind of also a funny story. Uh, my senior year of college, I sent in a resume to Anime Insider, uh, Wizards then uh, Anime Magazine, and a man named Rob Ricken was the editor-in-chief there at that time. Uh, he left shortly thereafter, before I started freelancing for Anime Insider, um, to go work for Navarre for Anime Online. And he stole a bunch of resumes, I'm told, uh, mine among them. And he kind of, I'm sure, staffed them the order of people who wanted to hire and got through, you know, three quarters of the staff and finally got to me and called me and said, I've got this project. I really can't tell you anything about it. Want to fly out to Texas for a day? And I said, sure, creepy guy on the phone. That sounds great. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, I need creepy men on the internet. Oh. No. Robin's not creepy. He's just drunk. Um, <laughs> He's a great, great guy. You should all read his blog, Topless Robot. If you want to talk about some of the best just content you can't get elsewhere, he is the master, and and he's only been doing the web for like a few years. He's only been doing Topless Robot for about as long as I've been doing anime life. Was your education important? Yes, uh, I am, and I, I think I'm safe to say this, I'm one of relatively few anime journalists with a journalism degree, which is not to say that if you have some without one, um, and if you have the right instincts, and uh, you, know, you can kind of pick up most of the rest. But I really think it helped me a lot just in feeling confident to do a lot of kind of the go-getter stuff, 
you know, I reached out to companies that I hadn't already met when I was still running.